When students start this process, they say, I would like to vote, but I don't know how. And I don't think I should vote if I don't understand the issues. That's true not only here, but nationally. That, that is the usual position of a student entering college. The Chico Great Debate is a partnership between the City of Chico and the University campus to do actually a number of things. It started because the City Manager's Office was concerned about the level of incivility in some public conversations in City Council Chambers, and they asked us to think about whether there would be a way to create a public space where contentious issues could be discussed, but civility was at the heart of the proceedings. The origins of the Great Debate Project actually stretch back to the summer of, I think it was 2009, when there were the healthcare town halls across the country. Those town hall meetings were extremely rowdy, a lot of them unproductive, and a lot of people were really angry during those meetings. John Rucker, who's the assistant city manager, observed some of that, along with some of our local meetings here, city council meetings and whatnot, and was just sort of left with a question of how can we do better in terms of public deliberation, policy making, and getting the public involved. He came to Thea Wolf, who is here on campus and works with first year experience with that question. She contacted some of us in communication studies because of our background in speech and debate. I teach argumentation and debate. Uh, which is basically a class in the communication studies department that teaches both the ideals of logic, um, like the philosophy class, and it's a general education requirement for that logic, but we teach it through the filter of rhetoric. So um, they actually do debates on both sides of a current events issue. They have to take both the affirmative and the negative stance against the issue and uh, they focus on how to develop argument, how to refute argument, how to defend argument against attack um, in a verbal form. From that, we came up with the Great Debate, a series of extended exchanges wherein the students and the local population interact about a wide variety of controversial issues, but do so in a civil way hoping that we can train the next generation of people to do better, behave more civilly, and have more informed and nuanced conversations than the people in other generations have. The Chico Great Debate, it's a large public event held in the City Council Chambers. Um, the Communication Studies Department chooses students from their public speaking classes to come forward and um, give presentation panels and debates on what we call contentious issue. So any hot topic that raises heat within um, a person when discussed. So this semester's theme is education. As a result, all the students in all the classes will be giving speeches about education throughout the semester. As a result, they get informed both as listeners and as speakers about education reform or whatever the topic of the semester may be. So their first assignment in the class was to choose a subtopic area of the greater education reform idea. Um, and there were a variety of ideas that got chosen. Some people were talking about sex education in K through 12. Some people talked about um, how we should do away with testing and implement more cooperative basis of evaluating students. Um, some students talked about the funding issues. So there's a number of different issues that arose in those primary research assignments that they did. This semester we're learning in my class about K-12 through education reform and we all have a subtopic. For example, mine's st standardized testing. And um, we learn the pros and cons and kind of where people stand on it and the issues we face. And um, it's exciting because it's something we've all experienced and um, we've all gone through the No Child Left Behind Act. It's all affected us somehow. Our first goal isn't actually related to the topic. Our first goal is that we want the students to learn how to talk to each other for extended periods of times about controversial issues without getting mad at each other. To be able to have a sophisticated conversation about something they may feel really strongly about. And then secondly, we want students to understand the importance of research and the importance of listening in terms of forming political opinions. Pretty much to gear up for it, what we do is um, tons of research on both sides so we can have the most um, persuasive and also informative speech 
and to also really be informed on our topic. So in the case of the great debate, as the students do research in order to be prepared to make a public presentation, part of what they're learning is how city government works, why it's important to be able to speak your mind as a community member in a public city council meeting, and what it means to dig up the information you need to be an informed voter. Having a consistent conversation through the course of a semester about one particular topic is really cool because it gets them much more invested in the topic and into their peers. You have students that have maybe never really thought about education reform, but then through the course of this semester, wow, they have exposure to so many different ideas in so many different ways. It, it sort of, it makes them feel empowered and like they have a level of expertise. The students go to the city council chambers all throughout the day. They'll run the presentations and debates and panels. And we invite community members to come in as audience. Public sphere pedagogy takes a usual reading, writing, research sequence in a first year course, and it adds a public component. That gives students a reason to engage in the research. They understand the purpose for it, and they cease to see it as merely an exercise. Results from the other public sphere events at the university indicate that it can increase retention rates, and students come to, under, like I said, understand themselves as adults and not just as high school plus students. We've built on this by looking into the community and working to bring in everyone from school children to seniors who are retired. So when this works right, we get quite a range of ages and we really intend to do that. We want all of these different perspectives and we want people to be able to benefit from encountering lots of perspectives not like their own. I think there's a few different objectives that we're working towards as far as using the great debate as a learning tool. I think the first is teaching students that the formality of their argument um, needs to be contextualized. So a lot of times we have in-class presentations where students are um, comfortable because they're in front of people that they know, they're in front of the people that they've been with, their peers for the entire semester in a classroom setting, which is where they spend every day. And so that sometimes will negatively affect how seriously or how formal they make those presentations. So by moving that into a context like the city council building, which is where we do the great debate at, um, I think it gives them a feeling of what it's like to be in one of those public spaces and how that context may affect the arguments that they make and the way that they present those arguments. As a takeaway from that, in the long term, our hope is that then they start to see themselves as voters and as members of the community rather than just as students passing through. So those are some of our real goals for the students who participate in the Great Debate. Some of my favorite parts of the Great Debate are watching the students get up and they're a little nervous and they're very, very prepared. The teachers have done a great job of helping the students to be ready. And the students who present discover in this public arena that they know a lot and they're able to convey a lot of good information to the people in the audience who are there to try to learn more about the issue. So I particularly like that. I like watching the growth in the students and their realization that they can do this work and that they know they've learned a lot about an issue that really is consequential. Well, my communications group and I definitely met a lot before the Great Debate in order to prepare, and we also had our teacher walk us through it. She definitely helped us correct any little details that we needed to fix, and so she was kind of guiding us the whole way through. Students who come from the Great Debate, they always leave with a built-up level of confidence. They're extremely nervous before they go in. Um, they're always saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to do this. This is so scary. I don't know these people. Um, but then they leave um, feeling empowered to tell people about what they have researched and what they've learned and how, what they believe about the issue now. Um, because people do want to hear what they have to say. And it's not just their classmates. It's actually people from the community coming forward to hear what they have to say. And so it's really good for them. I felt pretty confident before the Great Debate um, because we nailed our presentation in the classroom. We got a pretty good grade, obviously, because we were chosen to go to the Great Debate. But walking into the room and seeing that we were in the main city chambers, that was a little 
nerve wracking because there's so many people. And so that's when I like started to get pretty nervous. There's this initial, I don't want to say fear, but there's a sort of shock initially. Oh my gosh, this matters. And then after that, there tends to be some real excitement that comes with that and a real sense of accomplishment that you're in the space where important local decisions get made. People are here that aren't your classmates and they're here to listen to what you have to say. And there are people about this that actually care and care about what you have to say. The main event debate takes place in the evening. That involves community members partnered with experienced, award-winning debate team students. That's always a lot of fun. It's a very sophisticated debate, typically. That's a really lively, interesting part of the day. And because it's the final event, it's sort of the crowning piece that we've all been looking forward to. I actually like the arguments on both sides because both were well-reasoned and they hit a core. What we hope that people get out of this more than anything else is a commitment to having open, honest, and civil discussions with each other about contentious issues. And I cannot thank our panel enough for modeling that behavior for us. Those are contentious issues, those are incredibly strong opinions, but I've never heard them discussed more persuasively and more professionally. And I hope that that's something that we can model in our own lives around kitchen tables and in the city council chambers as well. These public issues, although they are contentious and although there are many people who feel very strongly about one side or the other, if you do research on them and you really delve into the subject deeply, you find that there are probably good arguments on both sides. And even though because of your past experience or your convictions, you come down on one side or the other, I think that showing them that researching both sides of the issue really opens up their ideas to to being more compromising, I guess, towards what they don't agree with necessarily, but now they can see where those arguments are coming from. At a phenomenally high level, about 85%, these students will emerge from this experience saying that they have more confidence in themselves. They are more interested in having discussions about public issues, which until now they thought only their parents had discussions about. So they begin to see themselves as more like their parents, more ready to do adult work in the world. They often say that they see a purpose for research. They also say they see their college education differently. They see how it's preparing them for work beyond college. The Chico Great Debate Project works. Um, it's hugely impactful on students, it's hugely impactful on the community, and um, it brings together both the campus and community. I've seen it, we see them come through, and there's a growing interest from the community, which is so cool because it's a campus event. Anecdotally, the surveys that students fill out afterwards, we could not be more pleased with where they are initially. It was really great, actually, it, it kind of uh, got me really infuriated, infuriated and excited about, I don't know, politics. I was, after going to the first debate, I actually wrote an angry blog to John Rucker about like, yeah, well, here's my response to your debate. And I don't know, was, I thought it was pretty great. I've, I definitely love this event. I'm still developing my role here because I am a freshman, but just given the chance to participate in the great debate, makes me realize that I have the ability to do a lot more in the coming years. I, I would love to work with this topic more after working with it for the Great Debate because um, I've become more passionate about it, knowing more about the issue, and it's something um, I always silently thought about, but these classes have let us like actually get it out and like talk about it. So um, I'd love to work with it. If you, I don't know about legislation necessarily, but, um, but to be part of some sort of movement for education reform would be really cool. Thanks so much for coming, and I hope to see you at the next great debate.